modernizing a few of my old outfits, some really niche gifts for the special people in your life, a few pieces of outerwear that I recently picked up, and my favorite beauty item from each category. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. So if you have been watching my most recent videos, you know that I have been on what I'm calling a little style journey, right? I've told you how it started at the beginning of the year when I decided I was going to lose weight and really seeing how the women in Milan were very fashionable, but also there was just that extra oomph that I just couldn't put my finger on. If you watch this video, you saw that I came up with this beautiful mood board, right? That was more of a vibe and less of the trends that I thought that I had to wear. But I decided to approach fashion in a different way. So I thought that it would be very interesting <laughs> to go back and look at a few of my old outfits and modernize them to fit the vibe that I've always really wanted to wear. So to start this video off, we are going to roast me just a little bit. If you have an iPhone, you know that there are featured videos or featured pictures every day and it goes back in your camera roll and you'll just have random pictures that you actually may have forgotten about. So this picture happened to be one of those featured pictures one day and I had to gasp. <laughs> this was a very long time ago, but what was interesting, and I don't know how this happened, when I swiped to the next picture, this picture came up. And just to see not only how I've grown up and have aged, right? But just to see the evolution of what I was to what I am. The new picture of me with the blazer was from a few months ago and I started to feel a little better in my skin when I started to see more of my weight loss. You can see here that my face is still a little more round than it is, than it is right now. Um, but I started to feel better so I started to dress a little better. But anyway, so to see the evolution from this to this made me take a step back. Now, while this was a long time ago, I was much younger and the trends were different, you could really see the elements of what I love now in this photo, right? You guys, if you've been following me for a while, you know I love a faux fur moment. You know that I love feathers. And in this picture, of course, I'm wearing a faux fur vest. You also know that if you've been following me for a while and in this video, you've seen me get rid of some of my boots, that I am a stand for a knee high boot. They just kind of balance me out. That is my preferred style. And of course, in this picture, I also have on a knee high boot. And if you are an OG and you saw the video of my sunglasses collection, you know that sunglasses are a big part of my style and they've been since probably I was 12 years old. So wearing these sunglasses with this outfit is very much me, even to this day. However, there is no way that I would wear this outfit as is today. So while I would wear a mini skirt, because I have a mini skirt on here, I didn't find anything that I would love for this look. I did in fact find this Derek Lamb skirt that is very, very much more me right now. Oh, it is not the same exact brown. It is a more rich brown and something that I'm much more likely to wear now. Now, if this was shorter in a mini skirt, I would also wear that. I love a good mini skirt as long as I have on my knee high boots. I just couldn't find something that I wanted exactly to remake this outfit. What's also interesting about this outfit that I wanted to point out was not only the feathers and, or the feathers, but not only the fur is something that I still like, is that I still have on this beautiful jewel tone green, which I still very much love. But instead of wearing this green blouse that I believe I got from Forever 21 or something, this was a long time ago, so the fact that I can remember that is amazing. I would instead wear this beautiful silk blouse paired with that brown leather skirt. So we have that beautiful color palette, a similar color palette, but it's a little more rich. But what I don't have is the element of fur or feathers or something a little more glamorous. I showed you guys this coat uh, a while ago, right? In fact, I got it and I want to show this to you later in the video. And just to bring in that bit of glamour that I've told you guys that I love, I very clearly remember these boots. They had a very, very round toe 
um i think i got them from nine west i'm pretty sure there was a random buckle on them it just it wasn't the best <laughs> then i thought they were amazing but now in my grown women's state, I know that there is a better option. These in particular would go in with the nice sleek look that matches so well with the sleek skirt and a little bit of glamour that is with this fur jacket. It is the same elements, the same colors, but richer and very, very much me. I think sometimes when we are reevaluating our style, we feel like we have to switch up everything and i don't think we do or just by looking at the elements of this old picture you can tell what i really still love and when i saw this picture i really had to laugh it's just not as developed as my style is now same elements just not all the way there is controversial <laughs> like I don't I'm not sure I don't know what I was thinking with this outfit if I'm being completely honest but again you can a hundred percent see the elements that I love in this outfit so you see that there's lace you see that I love um, a little leg. I don't know why I would choose these shorts. <laughs> you see that I still love a beautiful blazer. And this one, interestingly enough, is like an old school hourglass blazer, <laughs> right? The cut is completely wrong for modern times. But you again see the elements from this outfit that I love and that I would like to refine um, for 2023-24. If I were to remake this again, and I've, I've, I've showed you guys these shorts a million times, <laughs> I would wear these full leather shorts I got these a long time ago I believe from Macy's if not I'm sure it's on the screen but there are tons of options and as far as lace tops go this one from Free People and this one from Revolve will do the trick and because this blazer that I'm wearing right now is super dated I would choose this hourglass blazer that I showed you guys from Mango and in a different video right or the classic Frankie Shop one, just to bring it into 2023. Now here I have, I believe these are Sam Edelman shoes with the spikes on it. Listen, if you're an elder millennial, you remember these shoes, okay? <laughs> and I used to love them. Would I wear them now? Probably not. Instead, I would either wear these beautiful flaps from Tory Burch that I showed you guys before, or these kitten heel stove boots that I think are not only comfortable, but very, very chic. Similar look, more updated, and definitely the elements that I still love to this day. Now, this look is much more recent. This is maybe 2020, 2021, much more recent. When I was still in my era of trying to be trendy and be that fashion girl, when in fact, I was born a fashion girl, darling. <laughs> but this doesn't really speak to me. You guys saw me talk about these boots um, in this picture that I am definitely getting rid of. Not that anything is wrong with them. They just don't make my heart sing and they don't make me happy or fit into um, how I want to project to the world, right? But again, you can see the elements of things that I like in this outfit, right? Um, the structure of the trench coat, again, the knee-high boots that are pointy, all of that I still really, really love. But if I were to wear this today, I would execute it a lot differently. So the first thing I would probably do is change the color of the trench coat. Now, while this is a beautiful color, blue doesn't always bring out the best in my coloring, right? And I wear it, um, but I know that I look better in other colors. And also I wanna give it a little bit more of a luxurious feeling. So you guys have heard me talk about silk and satin at nauseum. <laughs> so when I found this trench coat from Wolf and Banger that not only has that beautiful shape, but also has a gorgeous finish and this satin trench coat and a beautiful, beautiful color, that will work a little better on me. I also found this as a fabulous option. This color 
would look so good on me. It gives it a little bit more of a luxuriousness, if you will, because of the fabric. And this one, although not cheap from Louisa V Aroma, is another fabulous option. Now, if I were going to redo this outfit and stick with the blue, it would have to be something more like this. I would use this as an option. Not only does this have a more luxurious material, but this color blue works a little better on my complexion. So there are definitely options that resonate more with my style. Underneath this blue trench, I have on a black knit dress, which is very easy to find. This one will do. And as far as the boots, I would either go with these from Paris, Texas, or even these from Jimmy Choo. This top handle bag that I'm wearing in the picture is from Brandon Blackwood. And while I love Brandon Blackwood and have at least four of his bags, this one wasn't for me. Um, I believe it was a nylon and I end up selling it and it's in a better place right now. But what I loved about the bag is that it was compact and it had a little handle. Now, I would prefer to be a top handle and for this outfit, just to make it really sleek and sophisticated, I would choose this beautiful bag that I have spoken about over and over again. You put it all together, it is a absolutely fabulous look and you can see the elements from the old outfit into the new. So I'm really just having a fabulous time um, shopping or window shopping because I'm not buying too much because I'm still shrinking, right? Window shopping and finding things that I know are going to make my heart sing. I don't want anything in my closet that doesn't make me exceedingly, exceedingly happy, bubbling with joy. <laughs> Speaking of joy, it is the time of year where we are buying gifts for other people. And if you have anybody in your life that is like me and has a lot, you want to find some beautiful niche gifts that are not too expensive to share with your family and friends. So you have seen me talk about leather allergy before and I even contemplating getting this exact train case, um, but I really wanted or want still the Louis Vuitton one. I searched high and low when I was in Europe a few months ago and I didn't have it so I ended up getting something else. But I feel like this is a good gift and a really cute present for the special person in your life. They even have um, some gift sets so you get the train case and this little lipstick holder. I think it's a very very cute idea for the makeup enthusiast and travel person in your life. I have really been into a lot of vintage things lately, but vintage and fabulous. So these champagne coupes are actually from 1940 and you could get them from Etsy. And these teacups are from 1960, I believe, but they're just beautiful. They're a more original, everyone's not gonna have them. And if you have somebody in your life who they love fabulous things. <laughs> I feel like these are a perfect gift. I would love either one of these. And even if they don't drink, if they're not big into drinking, these champagne coupes can be used for Martinelli's. They can be used for any, any kind of drink, just to be a little bit more fabulous. I really like buying things for people that they wouldn't buy for themselves um, because they feel like it's frivolous and I get to give them something that they really love. I must have been living under a rock because I had no idea that Etsy sold 14 karat gold jewelry at decent prices. This bracelet to the left is 14 karat gold and gorgeous. This ring to the right is very dainty, very pretty. And what a beautiful little necklace. If you were looking to save a little money and give somebody something very special, again, look on Etsy for some beautiful 14 karat gold pieces. Now, I have been seeing these beautiful little combs everywhere, and they have designer ones from Celine, the other one is from Dries Van Noten, and while they are absolutely fabulous, they are not cheap. It's a cute little way to have a little entry level into designer, I guess, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you there are other ways to get a really beautiful comb without spending that much money. So these two places are, I think, a, a great option. The one on the left is much more affordable than the Celine and the Dries Van Noten. 
and the one on the right is more for women who have type 3, type 4 hair. As beautiful as those little combs are that the girls have on TikTok and are showing um, in their little makeup bag, they have type 1, type 2 hair, and my hair will laugh at those little combs, okay? I need something a little more substantial. In fact, I just got this pattern pick, and I'm waiting on the comb and the rest of it, but I absolutely love the pick. It's so pretty. And yeah, take a look at the comb for the special person in your life or that perfume lover in your life. To give them this beautiful solid perfume that they can throw in their bag is just, I think it's just the cutest idea. It also comes really cute in a package and it's beautiful and gold and dainty and it's something else that I would love to have. What person doesn't need a personalized lip balm? I saw these and I thought that they were really, really cute. You could pick your color, you could put whatever different initials on there, or whatever it is to like personalize it. And apparently, this lip balm is supposed to be really amazing and made out of great um, substances and fabulous <laughs> ingredients and all of the good things. Honestly, and that may be true, I just think it's cute. And I think it's a great little idea um, just to give somebody special in your life. So if you have been following me for a while, you know I am a warm drink person. I love tea. I love lattes. I love hot cocoa. <laughs> I don't know why I said cocoa like that, but I do love all those things. And if somebody were to give me this, I would be so happy. This comes with different types of tea to try for different days. If you are in um, the north if you are in a cold weather climate the Midwest you guys know we are about to be in for a long haul so to have different teas to warm up it's just a really good gift to have and I would love to have this so are you shopping for other people what are you buying give me some gift ideas <laughs> did you see anything that you would like to buy for yourself there's a few things on that gift wish list that I just showed you <laughs> that I think that I want to buy for myself don't tell anybody. So if you watched my last video, you saw that I am redoing my coats. I got rid of a few coats. I got rid of a lot of coats. I got rid of a lot of coats that don't really serve me anymore. You also saw me get that coat from Cause that's very structured, um, very classic, very tailored. And I'm actually looking for something very similar to that, but in a different colorway and it's extra long. So I'm kind of on a search for that. But I recently got a few statement coats that I want to show you. So while this is not new or a statement coat, I realized that I haven't showed you guys this coat from Cause all the way on. You saw me try it on in the store, but let me tell you, I have been wearing the heck out of this and I'm absolutely in love with it. Now, like I said, while it's not a statement coat, it can still make a statement. You see, I paired it with this hat and my little vintage Bottega bag and it really still makes a statement. Now, I do wish that it was longer, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty long, it's pretty long. But I recently did see this one from H&M Studio Collection that came out on the 7th that I am contemplating getting. I wish it wasn't in black because I don't need another black coat, but I do like that it is extremely long. So I'm looking into that. And if you wanted this coat and it's sold out, I feel like the H&M one is a decent option. You saw me talk about this in the last video when I was like revamping my coats and while bubble coats and down coats are not my favorite if I'm being honest it is just part of living in a cold climate and if I have to wear this coat I want it to look as chic as possible and I think this is a really good option to the more expensive ones out there this coat is originally $250 but on Black Friday I got it for $125, $150, something like that. It was $40 or 50% off and that is my love language. <laughs> Sales are my love language so I was really happy to get it at that price. I really wanted it in that beautiful crimson red color that they have for an option but I was just too late to get it. I am happy with this though. So I also showed you all this coat um, in other videos and I talked about it earlier in this video. 
and I'm thinking that I might send it back. Not because it's not an absolutely gorgeous and fabulous coat, it's because in my head I wanted something different. Like I am stuck on finding a vintage fox coat and ah, I'm torn because this coat really is really cute and it's quite beautiful. It's very glamorous, which is part of my three words, right? But what if I find a vintage one that I like even more and then I just have this coat? You know, I've just been going around and around in circles. So, ah, uh, I don't know. I might send it back. I might not. Let me know what you think. If you got this coat, I saw a few of you have gotten it. Let me know if you like it. So this coat is just a lot. And I am 100% aware of how over the top this is. And I love it. I think that it is so glamorous now while it might be a special occasion coat for some i would wear this whenever i want to wear it in fact <laughs> i might wear it with like a cashmere um jumpsuit underneath some sneakers and like my vintage um, my vintage louis vuitton speedy i don't know but i love it and i know that this is not everyone's taste and i think that's okay as well i will also say that the price that i paid for it it was fabulous but if it were full price i would not have paid for it for several reasons the biggest reason though is that the lining um, in the collar is pleather it's not leather and for the original price of this coat i feel like it should have been leather now i could be wrong maybe it's like a construction thing and that's what they had to use but this coat was supposed to be eight to a thousand dollars and for that i feel like i could have gotten some leather i don't know in the collar but that's just me but i just wanted to bring that to, it, to your attention because i did see this jacket also on janae from hilo lux and i don't know if she mentioned that or not but i did want to mention that um but yeah i think it's fabulous is it over the top yes is it fabulous equally yes so if you have been keeping up with my latest videos you know that i have been trying to work through the beauty products that i have and i have been doing a great job <laughs> But what I'm also trying to do is kind of pinpoint my favorite products from each category because some of the things I just won't be using and I might just get rid of it. Let me show you my favorite products from each beauty category. This video is longer than I thought it was going to be, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through each category. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to go through each category, but I am going to go through about three or four. So this is all the foundation that I have. Now while this may seem excessive, because it is, <laughs> this is actually much better than what I used to have. So this is actually, believe it or not, a win. The biggest problem is, is that these still don't all work for me and I'm holding on to them for different reasons. These two, these two are gorgeous and affordable and black women owned. The only problem is both of them are too dark for me right now. Those work much better in the summer, so I'm not getting rid of those yet. These two I told you guys about, I showed you in my um, Milan video or the video before Milan in Paris. These are my favorite, like Danessa Myricks, you cannot beat it, right? These two, I love the finish of them. However, because when I bought them, they didn't have one in between. I bought these two colors and I mixed them. One of you all did mention to me that there is a 8.5. This is nine and this is eight. And I thought to go look at the 8.5. However, I don't want to get it yet until I work through these two colors. As you see, I have so much, I have so much that I need to kind of work through, right? This is the most recent. This haul slab is so good. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I love this. And the color match for me is very good. This Tom Ford one is insanely expensive. However, <laughs> the finish is beautiful and it's one of my favorites. Um, the caveat for this one though is that this is the wrong color and it doesn't work as well on me because I got the wrong color. This Gucci one, again, beautiful finish it's natural that's really how I like my foundation but the color is too light and for some reason 
um, I never got rid of it. I had a, a deeper color that wasn't perfect, um, but I used it through and then I had this color and I was mixing them. For this foundation, this Gucci foundation, there's so many neutral colors and they are described as neutral colors and I am so not neutral. I have very warm undertones. So anything that is neutral um, just makes me look ashy. So I have this, but I haven't been using it because it makes me look ashy. In fact, I tried it on before I did this segment and it still looks ridiculous. So I'm probably gonna get rid of that. And this, this NARS is just like, I have been wearing NARS and this color for so many years. And I have to say, out of all of these, this one is still my favorite. And I know you all have to, are tired of me talking about this one, but this is my favorite out of this category. None of these, with the exception of Hoss Labs, has such a great color match. Now, while this Hoss Labs does have a fantastic color match, it still does not compare to my NARS. I don't know what it is. And I really want to explore with different foundations, but if they don't match, I can't be out here looking like boo boo the fool, <laughs> right? So, oh, it's very frustrating. It's definitely my favorite out of this whole category. And I'm gonna get rid of this, because why keep it? I'm probably gonna keep these until the summertime, because I'm gonna need a darker foundation. And yeah, I'm gonna work through these and maybe try the 8.5, but this, NARS, Reign Supreme as my favorite foundation in the foundation category. For me to be down to three bronzers, is a feat that I never thought that I would accomplish. <laughs> Back in the day, I don't know why I was so heavy into bronzers, but I guess that was just the thing that everyone was doing. So I was like, okay, me too. For me to be down to three is huge. However, there are some caveats which each bronzer. So this one, again, I believe this one is inexpensive, affordable, and black owned, but this color does not work for me. It comes off a little bit too gray on my complexion, which is terrible because it's a beautiful color. And it's called Strength, which is dark. I don't know if it's the darkest one, but it is dark. And yeah, it just didn't work for me. It's such a cute packaging and everything. It just didn't work. As you can see, it's barely been used. So wasteful. This Charlotte Tilbury one is such beautiful packaging and the one that I use the most. I don't really use bronzer every day except for on my eyelids. And this is the one that I go to often. If you can see how much richer the Charlotte Tilbury one is, I don't know if the camera is showing it, but it definitely is. And then and this one from Gucci is so pretty. It looks so old school Hollywood and just really beautiful. Like something that would be on like Lena Horne's beauty desk or her beauty, her vanity or Dorothy Dandridge or like uh, Eartha Kitt or Marilyn Monroe. That era of beauty, it's really just vintage looking and absolutely beautiful. I love it. However, the gag is, I forgot that I had it. Went through my makeup today and picked it up and realized that this was the best and I don't know why I stopped using it. I hope that the camera is showing you how much more rich this one is from Gucci than the other two. This one from Gucci has a little bit more red, which I absolutely love. In fact, I love this for my eyelids. It just makes it look a little bit more smoky and very natural. And again, look how just beautiful and old Hollywood it looks. I think this is so gorgeous. It does come with a brush that I have never used. It's still in there and I don't use it. I have my own bronzer brushes that I use instead, but it's still so cute. This is like such a cute old school type of vibe that I love. I don't know why I, I forgot about this, but this one, hands down, is my favorite. I would say the Charlotte Tilbury is the most used and that's probably because it's just been, you know, on my desk and in my, in my view. But I forgot about this. This is hands down my favorite. I love this. Both of these, I believe, hold a place in my makeup collection. So this category is just lip balm pretty much. And I had to just narrow it down to four because this could have really gotten out of hand and I'm not, I refuse to be embarrassed and show you the amount of lip balm that I have <laughs> because it just doesn't make any sense. So I have this one from Chanel that stays on my ma my makeup vanity and it's cute. It's a very cute um, little balm. You can see I use it very often. 
I'm not gonna lie to you, I love that it says Chanel. It's a little fancy, right? <laughs> it's a little luxurious, which I love. And then I also have the Chanel lip balm in a tube, which is gone. I was trying to roll it up, but that's it. I'm, um, I'm pretty much done with this one. And then I've showed you guys this one before, this beautiful YSL one. I mean, the gold packaging is to die for. It's very pretty. I use this one, however, I don't use it as much as the Chanel one. As you can tell, I am pushing through and we'll be finished with that soon. Most recently, you all have seen me bought this Nukes one from um, a French pharmacy and I kind of told you guys how crazy it was in the French pharmacy. So here's the thing, this Chanel one in a pot and this one in a tube are very aesthetic, right? They're very pretty. I love to have them just because of that reason. But if I'm being honest, I don't necessarily need this one. This is pretty standard in my opinion. Um, and so is this, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm just putting it out there. I pretty much 100% buy these for the packaging because I think they are adorable. And I will probably buy it again just because I like pretty things. But if I had to choose between the Chanel and the YSL one, I would go with the YSL one. The YSL one is a bit more moisturizing and one of my favorite lip balms. Believe it or not, what has stole the show as my favorite is this one from the French pharmacy. I'm pretty sure we could get this in America. And I mean, I hope so, cause I love it. This one is hands down my favorite. A little goes a long way. And I've been using this a lot and it looks like I barely touched it. I mean, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the Chanel or the YSL, but it 100% gets the job done. I would love, this, is, this might sound tacky, but I would love to finish this buy this and put it into into this packaging just because this is you know cute and this just works better i have been trying to tell you all that i'm one of those people who are always dry <laughs> it doesn't matter how much oil i put on how much water i drink i'm just dry so i have to take precautionary measures to make sure that when i'm out in public that i'm not ashy okay so it starts in the shower which i've i'll talk about later and i actually showed you guys some other things about this but once i get out the shower lotion is my friend and i have plenty of it this Nivea one is a staple that I will always have in my home this deep nourishing serum um, with al with almond oil is the one that I need I need something deep y'all I'm ashy <laughs> I need something deep that really gets in there so I love this one this one I don't use as much even though it is empty it's because both my husband and I use this one but it works well I don't love it as much as the Nivea but this one does the job this La Roche Prose one is babe okay if you've been following me for a long time you've heard me talk about this this is the triple repair moisturizing cream i love this and of course it's a little it costs a little more than these two but i adore this and then i have like some cute ones so i have this one from sol de janeiro um and i use it and i love the smell of it and it's super cute and everyone else has this smell and you can see i've definitely used some but i have not used as much as i should have used it for the time that i've had it mainly because i'm using other ones oh i smell it i got a whiff that smells amazing <laughs> and then i have this one from fenty that everybody was going on and on about and I felt like I had to have it. And though it is a very luxurious cream and I'm glad that I have it, as you can see, I don't reach for it that often. Um, not because I don't like it, it's just because I have other things that I prefer. And then of course, I also have the original one from Fenty, which you can see I've used a little more. My favorite out of this whole category would be the La Roche Posay. Um, I, when I'm telling you, it does the job. It, if you are dry and ashy, <laughs> and your mom is ashy, and your father, and your brothers, and your sisters, <laughs> you need something to really get in there, and this would be that for me. So anyway, friends, these are my favorites from the four categories. I will definitely be doing more categories in the next video. My goal this year was to work through and get rid of things that don't serve me. 
and I think that I'm doing that. As I become more comfortable with my style and my weight, I will be much more on Instagram and TikTok, and I'm extremely excited about that. But I have been on TikTok for a while, and one of the favorite things that I love about TikTok is when people do their weekly report. And while I will not do this every week, on my YouTube channel. I will be doing this on my TikTok, so follow me over there. But because I feel like I missed a video and I haven't spoken to you in a while, here is my weekly report. So if you are not on TikTok, don't care to be on TikTok, and don't even know what that is, <laughs> a weekly report is simply an acronym for reading, eating, playing, obsessing, recommending, and treating. So a few things I've read this week, um, very interesting, fashion-wise, I've read other stuff, but as far as fashion is concerned, is this um, Lululemon scandal, which is so annoying that we're still dealing with this in 2023, almost 2024, but it is behind a paywall, so I'll try to get um, another article that's not behind a paywall, but pretty much there was a little lemon in Chicago that was dealing with racism, same old, same old, um, and honestly, it's annoying and tiring. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but you should be aware of it, and I'm going to put it in the description box. The other thing that I read was about uh, supposedly the comeback of Balenciaga. They recently had a fashion show in Los Angeles and it's been the talk of the town. I don't have opinions. No, that's not true. I have opinions. I just won't speak on them yet. Um, let me know what you think about that. Do you ever plan to buy Balenciaga or do you think that they are just beyond repair or forgiveness? And then the last thing, fashion-wise, that I read this week was on Who, What, Where, and it's about the jewelry trends for 2024. I love jewelry so much, so I was excited to read that. I will also link that and let me know what you think. So, you know, life is about balance, <laughs> okay? And while I have been on a weight loss journey and been doing good and still have more to lose, it is also... The holiday season and eggnog is part of that for me and if you are an eggnog hater i don't want to hear it okay i don't need that kind of negativity in my life <laughs> but i am one of those people who love eggnog i have been very careful with how much i'm drinking because eggnog can you know put pack on the calories but this particular eggnog i love it in general but this particular one i think is from a farm in upstate new york is so good if you are in the tri-state area I'm pretty sure that you can taste this and it's gonna be around it's just so delicious and because balance is necessary this salad <laughs> this like fall inspired salad has been delicious we're talking kale apple um, sweet potato um, salmon for me you could add chicken but I rather have salmon um, Parmesan cheese just ugh, deliciousness some people put goat cheese if you're into that my husband hates goat cheese so we've been using parmesan so yeah it's about balance you guys it's about balance so if you've been following <laughs> me for a while you do know that i love jazz and i love samara joy samara joy is this 24 year old woman from the bronx but she sounds like a 70 year old woman from new orleans when i'm telling you this lady or this young lady can sing the mess out of some jazz she is just stunning I recently saw her in live concert and I was just in awe. But anyway, she has this um, Christmas album that I have been playing over and over again, trying to stay in the holiday spirit. And then I've been playing um, the Jackson 5 album because that's something that I've always listened to growing up. My parents played it every year and we sing along and we dance around and we drink eggnog and we eat <laughs> and the Jacqueline 5 is something that's just always going to be in my household during Christmas and then within the probably last I don't know seven six years I guess I've started listening to Michael Buble and his Christmas album and he got some jams man I'm not gonna lie <laughs> he got some Christmas jams absolutely love it and then another one is Frank Sinatra something that my dad always played 
during the Christmas holiday and I love a good Frank Sinatra old school Christmas. I recently saw on TikTok and it really had to kind of laugh out loud that people are now saying <laughs> that round nails or oval nails, excuse me, are out. And square nails are in and you shouldn't have your nails too long and millennial this and Gen Z that and blah blah blah. Listen, <laughs> it's just, the whole thing is just crazy to me. Yes, I am millennial, but I also want to wear whatever I want to wear. So here I am with my short, round, well not round, but oval nails, and I love them. I've actually really been loving this little French manicure, and my nails are usually a bit longer than this, but the short French mani is giving me life, and maybe next time I'll get red or I'll grow them out, but right now I've been really obsessing over my nails. I am gonna go ahead and recommend you get the Speedy. Listen, I know that for so many years it was not on the forefront of fashion, but I love having this bag. I took it with me to see my family in Thanksgiving, thinking that I was just going to use it in the airport, but I use it the whole time. So much so that I'm thinking about getting the 25, because this is the 30. I'm thinking about getting the 25 in um, the regular campus, or maybe another Epi, I don't know. But it's definitely something that's on my list. I do not want it to be new though. If it is the regular canvas, it has to be vintage. And I think I've said that before. But if you are thinking about the Speedy and you've always wanted it, it's a great time. I told you guys a couple of videos ago, like a, a, a lot of videos ago, that the Speedy was going to be um, coming back. And if you start to look around, a lot of people are wearing the Speedy again. So if you already have yours, or if you want one, go ahead and get it. I've been loving mine. So unfortunately, this Christmas, I will not be seeing my family on Christmas Day, which makes me very sad because I could only think of one Christmas that I haven't seen, at least my mom, my dad, my cousin, somebody. Um, but this Christmas, everyone has different plans, which happens, you know, when you have a big family and um, nobody considered me. <laughs> so it's just gonna be me and my husband and it does make me a little sad. But in order to stay out of that sad place and into the Christmas spirit, I have been treating myself with some really Christmassy fun things. And this week we went to see the Rockettes. <laughs> guys we had a lot in this video we redid some of my old outfits we looked at some beauty I gave you some great gifting options I showed you my weekly report on what I've been up to and what I think is definitely worth your time this was a jam-packed video and as always I appreciate you taking the time to spend with me there are so many youtubers that you can watch but you took the time out of your busy day to watch me and I'm very appreciative so anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you in my next video.